lovely and darling viewers, it's Jen here at Check Her Joy, and this time I'm doing a Doctor Who haul video. So I have not been keeping up on my haul videos, first of all. So these are things that stretch all the way back to May of 2018 through February of 2019. And these are all things that I bought that are Doctor Who related uh, because I really, really love Doctor Who. I love the fact that these stories can go anywhere in all time and space, so every story is a little bit different, and you're never quite sure what's going to happen next, or where you're going to be, or who's going to show up, um, who you're going to be fighting. Tons of excitement and mystery, and I love it so much. So, first off, I did buy season 11, I think it's 11, the current season of Doctor Who, with Jodie Whittaker as the 13th Doctor, with Graham, Ryan, and Yaz as companions. So I buy them on iTunes because A, I don't have cable, and it's cheaper to just buy the few shows like Doctor Who that I really want to watch on iTunes than it is to pay for cable every month when I'm not using it. Also, I get to keep these episodes, so yay. Um, B, it's Doctor Who, so I do not mind spending my money on it at all, as evidenced by the fact that I have an entire video, a whole video of just Doctor Who. Um, so, yeah. I am loving Jodie's time as the Doctor. It still feels like the Doctor, but also it's going a little differently, um, not relying so much on past storylines. Uh, that was something that I think Stephen Moffat was really getting bad at at the end of the last few seasons was like every story had, like you couldn't watch an episode without having seen all of Stephen Moffat's stuff or even all of New Who because he was constantly referencing things that had happened a couple seasons ago. Um, so it was getting ridiculous. So I'm glad that uh, Chris Chibnall is starting over. We got a clean slate. We've got new stories. My favorite ones were actually the historical episodes when we saw Rosa Parks and when we go back and see Yaz's family during the partition of India. So where Pakistan India split. Um, those were my two favorites. And normally the historical ones aren't really that high on my favorite list. Like a couple of them do. Like Vincent and the Doctor is like one of my all-time favorite Doctor Who episodes. Where they meet Vincent Van Gogh, but like normally most of the historical ones don't rate that high. So those were actually my favorites this season. And I also got the New Year's um, special and watched that. Um, yeah, I'm really loving Jodie as the Doctor. It's amazing. And then I was at Walmart and also saw that they had the DVDs. I'll let they like be released. But this set is all of Christopher Eccleston and David Tennant's episodes together. And it was only $25, so I had to get it. Um, it also came with a vinyl um, Titan blind bag, so we have the character from Silence in the Library, which I think is pretty cool. I was also glad that I didn't get like a distorted dialect because that looks, that one just looks so wrong. Why would you distort the dialect? Why? Um, so he's cute. Not too bad. A little bit creepy, but kind of adorable. Um, but mostly I'm excited to have these episodes. David Tennant's my favorite doctor. He's my first doctor, so to have all of his on DVD. This is also before I started buying them on iTunes, so I don't own them. Um, so it's exciting to have them just all on DVDs like that. The discs themselves aren't that interesting, but the fact that there's 12 discs that have four and a half seasons of Doctor Who on them, um, all the way through the specials, um, David has last episodes. So yay! It's a pretty good price for four and a half seasons to only spend $25. Um, they also had all of Matt Smith's and all of Peter Capaldi's episodes. I own all of Peter Capaldi's episodes on iTunes and like half of Matt Smith's. Um, so they weren't as urgent as I don't own David Dennett's. So yeah, you can start off. I have the beginning of New Who. All right, moving on. The book stuff. Um, I found Doctor the First, which is a picture book um, by Roger Har Hargreaves. He wrote on a cursive, so you can't read it. Uh, so this is a part of this part of a series he did with like the doctors, and they're like picture books. And this one has the doctor and Susan. Um, I think they're fighting Cybermen. They're really cute illustrations. It's a picture book. It's really simple, really quick. Um, but they're retailed at six dollars each. I found it at half price books for only three dollars for just the first one. Um, so that was exciting to find. And then I have. A bunch of Doctor Who comics. Um, first off, I have issues one through five of the Eighth Doctor comics with writing by George Mann. This is a complete story arc, which is why I bought it. I also bought it on Free Comic Book Day, so I wouldn't just be getting free comics because you know support your retailers. Um, so all five of them were bundled together, so I could read the entire story arc. I, I hate 
reading like one story, like getting a few comics and then missing one and then you don't have it. Um, I, I prefer reading them all at once anyway. So yeah. Exciting. I don't know what these story arcs are, guys. I don't want to know going into these. So I can't tell you what exactly happens in these. Any of these comics. I also have The Many Lives of Doctor Who. This has a ton of artists and stuff. Um, so this one is basically flashbacks to different points in the Doctor's um, timelines with different artists and writers doing different like couple page long stories. Um, flashback scenes. It's interesting. It's definitely standalone. You don't need to read a bunch of anything else for it. Um, I do think it's a little bit strange if you've never seen Dr. Who and you don't know the regenerations to just have them go through so quickly. Um, that might not be great, but I read it and found it interesting. I liked the mix of the companions. Some of the more well-known ones um, show up, obviously. Um, I liked which companions they picked for which doctor. Um, this one's definitely interesting. <laughs> I did read this one and the verdict is that it was interesting. Um, I'm not sure it's a rush out and you need to have it, especially since it's a self-contained thing that doesn't, like, none of the comics um, influence anything else. There's a ton of different art styles in here. I also have issues one and two of Jodie Whittaker's, um, first line of comics. With writing and art by Jody Hauser, Rachel Stout, Enrique, Andre Angelino. Yeah. Um, I also have the first two issues of Jody Whitaker's time as the Doctor, which I haven't read these yet because I don't have the complete story arc yet. And I hate waiting. I hate waiting so much. And then like you get the next one, you forgot what happened, so you have to go back and reread the other two, the other ones, so... I think the few pages I flipped through though, like the art style is weird and her face looks odd. This one wasn't even the worst. There was one I flipped to it and showed my brother and we're like, is that human? I mean, the answer is no, she's the doctor. But This face right here. What is this? This is so distorted and so odd and why? Why? I don't like really stylized art. I like things to look human or what they are um, in the show. <laughs> Um, and then I randomly have issues from August of 2014, which are issue, they're both issue one, but I have um, David Tennant and Matt Smith's first issues from that year, from their stories. I also have Doctor Who Tales of Terror. This is 12 chilling horror stories from across all of time and space. So these are Halloween or horror themed Doctor Who short stories with various writers um, like Scott Hancock, Paul Maggers, Richard Dunworth, Craig Donaghy, um, Jacqueline Rayner, Mike Tucker, and I think that was it. Um, each one of these stories follows their corresponding doctor. So the first story is the first doctor, the second story is the second doctor. Um, I've already read and reviewed all of these. Mostly I love these. Um, yeah, they're good. There is art in here somewhere. Yeah, these ones do come with art occasionally. Uh, most of them aren't linked, although they do happen chronologically. A couple of them are though. Um, so read them in order if you're gonna read all of them. Um, I love it. I love Halloween and I love Doctor Who. So this was just all all me. So this is a good mix of the classic doctors and the classic villains and the new doctors and the new villains and sometimes doctors uh, meet villains that they haven't met in the show which is just always fun um, and referencing other episodes and other stories and other things that happened. I love it. I loved it a lot. I also found The Writer's Tale, the final chapter. So this is Russell T. Davis's um, experiences writing and being the head producer on Doctor Who when it, they rebooted it. So like weren't sure it was gonna work. Um, so it's written by Russell T. Davis and Benjamin Cook. I am excited to get this. I haven't actually 
read any of them yet, but as somebody who loves Doctor Who and loves writing, I am super excited. There are photos in it. I also have The Doctor's Lives and Times. This is, um, I think it's tied into the 50th anniversary. It has contributions from several different people, but basically it's a collection of who the Doctor is and how they developed him um, at different points. It goes through... Um, okay, rating is by James Goss and Steve Tribe, although there are other people involved contributing to it. It has a copyright date of 2013, so yeah, would have been the 50th anniversary. Like, sidebars and stuff about the Doctor and who he is. Um, I'll read the back, actually. Um, this is the story of an impossible life, of a man who borrowed a spaceship, traveled through time, and continually saved the universe. As told by the Doctor's friends, by his enemies, and by the man himself. Letters, journals, trial records, secret government files, and the occasional bit of tabloid journalism revealed the never-before story of Gallifrey's last time lord. Go in through everything from the first Doctor through the 11th. So, I'm excited to dig through this and see what all is in here. I haven't really done that yet. So, this will be a fun little journey. And the last one is Doctor Who, the Encyclopedia. So this is done by Gary Russell. I actually have a previous edition of this already. Um, this one only covered, I think, through season four, though, which was fine because that's where I started watching Doctor Who. So it was really, really useful when I was originally watching the show to try to um, catch up and figure out who everybody was when they were being mentioned. Um, and see, like, the bios on the Doctor and the companions and the random places they are. So this one is building off of that, going through 2011, and just going through all of time and space. It looks like it's just covering what is, shows up in um, New Who, or what is referenced in uh, the stuff from 20, 2005 on. Um, I love it. Sarah Jane. I love Sarah Jane. She's like one of my favorite companions of all times. Um, so more complete and um, inclusive Doctor Who. Love it. Um, so there's my haul from the last several months of what I've gotten that was Doctor Who related. It's possible there's more stuff on my shelves that I forgot. Um, and I know that there was something I got for Christmas. Um, I also got the Missy Chronicles, which was on my Christmas book haul. I'll put the complete list of stuff down in the description below if you want to check them out or find them out yourselves. And I will also link to the review for Tales of Terror, which I already read and reviewed around Halloween. Um, let me know in the comments below if you have read any of these or own any of them or seen any of it and what you thought of it. What's your favorite part of Doctor Who? I love all of it. I love all of it. David Tennant's where I jumped in, so that's why he's my like he's my first Doctor. So generally, he's my default favorite Doctor. Although sometimes my favorite Doctor is whatever Doctor I read or saw last. Peace out. I love you guys and keep reading. Bye.